Hey, 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 good afternoon. I almost said good morning. I'm so used to coming on in the morning, but it is afternoon and I have a wonderful guest here and I'm so excited to have you here. How are you, Nicole? Hey, <laughs> I'm, I'm weird excited. Like, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> Well, I'm so glad you are here. I have been waiting on this book for some years and it is finally here. I have it in my hand and I am so excited to talk about your book. Now, you know, and I know that starting off reading this book, yes. I just thought you were going to start in slow and you were going to be nice and friendly and kind. But no, you just you just dug right in. And I was like, oh, so that's how she gonna do me. She's just gonna come right in. She's not even gonna be nice and start with pleasantries and warm me up. Nope, you was like, cut the warm and fuzzies. Let's jump right in. We ain't got time for that. <laughs> and I <laughs> thought I was being warm and fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Um, so I'm so excited about this book. Can you tell me how you landed on the title first? Well, Wow. So I cannot take credit on the title. Um, my, my my marketing team and the editors, you know, they put uh, they put a few options forward, and it was actually kind of like the lesser of the evil situation. Like I I honestly was not in love with the title when we first landed on it, and I kept walking around my house like um, like trying to preach it. And like, I'm <laughs> like, how does this, and just saying it in different ways just to kind of own it. But since that time, I think particularly when like the, the mock-ups and the early copies got into my hand and almost like a baby, right? And I held it and, um, and when I shared the cover reveal and I started seeing the response that women were having from just the title, like, and how much it was resonating with them, I said, okay, God, you really know what you're doing with, with down to the title. And so, um, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't handpicked. I can't, I can't own that, but I will say that since adopting the title, I've kind of inwardly and outwardly been trying to redeem the concept of courage and confidence to not be something that is perceived as a feeling. Um, but rather courage is courage and confidence Courage and confidence is kind of more like being, being uh, secure and, cl and clear and having your courage and confidence in Christ, right? And being super, and that in turn giving, giving you courage and confidence in who he's created you to be. So that's just kind of the, a bit of the backstory of the title. Amen to that. So I'm just going to rewind a little bit. Because mm -hmm. I usually read people's bios, and I totally didn't read your bio. So I'm just going to rewind and read your bio, okay? Go for it. <laughs> Nicole O'Salmon is an author, speaker, and pastor. Before launching her coaching firm, Nicole worked for over 20 years with organizations serving communities experiencing marginalization. Nicole is a certified life skills and marriage coach with a bachelor's degree in Christian ministry and certifications in adult learning and cognitive behavioral therapy. Together with her husband, Evan, Yvonne? Evan, yeah. Got it. Evan. Evan, and their five children okay. lives a full and purpose-filled life in Brampton, Ontario. Canadian. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. Can we jump into, like, your intent for your readers in this book? Yeah, yeah. I've been describing it as I'm hoping this book will create a global disruption uh, for Christian women. I'm yeah. I'm hoping that it will be like a a, 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 a call a call out to call in um, the daughters to to unburden themselves from the unhelpful ideologies about their purpose and their identity and and really just fall back in line with who God has designed them to be. And when I say unhelpful, I'm talking about we're looking at diving in on, you know, messaging from our childhood, 
about who we are and identity messaging from some of the people and places that we've been attached to, from relationships, from um, wrong theology and ideology about identity and how and being, you know, operating in power and all of that stuff. And so, yeah, I just, I want it to be a global disruption, Laverne. Like, I just want the, the same reaction you had. I don't, I want it to disrupt in a good way, like really disrupt and interrupt what has uh, been, um, I don't know, like just, there's so many women I think who do know, like as a coach, it's very rare that I sit with someone who after speaking with them, like they, they don't really know what they're supposed to be doing. This book is supposed to radically awaken your per- mission to trust what God has been revealing and to finally stand in that identity and operationalize what he's been, what he's given you to do. Hmm. Wow. That is, that is a lot. Um, But what I can honestly say is that I am grateful for the journal prompts and the remembers at the end of each chapter, like that kind of solidified as I went through each of them. Like, okay, I read all this. Ooh, let me take a step back. <laughs> let me get my bearings together. And then let me come back and journal. Because one of the things mm-hmm. that I found in reading it I immediately is that I was like, Nicole, what are you, what are you doing to me here? Like, I wasn't ready for this. Um, wow. and I know your heart, right? And I have been waiting on this for such a long time that I'm like, I got to dig in, like, I got to do the work and press past, like, all the uncomfortable feelings and really sit with the Holy Spirit and see what he's shining a light on. Like, girl, get your, get yourself together. <laughs> Let's go back through. You're a big girl. You can do this. <laughs> you, can, you got this. Yeah. 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 I know you're asking the questions, Laverna, but can I ask a follow-up one to that? So I and maybe you're gonna go here, but I hear this a lot. I hear this sentiment and reaction a lot. I'm curious to know, like, do you have an example of one of those moments where you were like, I'm through. You know what? I'm closing this book and chucking it across the room. Like, I gotta know. I got as as the author, I gotta know. It was in the belief systems, like the limiting beliefs mm-hmm. that I've had in my mind or the words someone has said to me that has carried me through negatively and affected every area right Mm. so i remember being in college and i lived off campus and it was three other roommates i had and they weren't necessarily nice girls i mean one Mm. was sort of kind of nice but one was pure evil and she would say stuff like no one cares what you have to say what you have to say doesn't matter no one's listening to you anyway and i literally carried that for so long and wow. my mom was like, I don't know why you keep carrying that around. Like, yeah, it was yeah, yeah. that happened way back when. Nicole, when I tell you, I carried that for so long. And, like, oh. even though you talk about it in this book, and even though there's other books that talk about, like, the things people have said, like, don't yeah. take things personal. I was like, no, y'all don't know what y'all talking about. I'm taking this yeah. personal. And so yeah. even in conversations with people, even when we're having group discussions, I would just be quiet. Right. Like, and I would prepare to speak and I would have something to say and still would shut up. Mm-hmm. That, like that has carried me for so long that it still affects me today. Like I wow. was in a meeting today and I have prepared for the meeting, Nicole. I'm yeah, telling you, yeah. I've been prepared for this meeting since Wednesday. I yeah. got in this meeting and was still quiet. I was like, wow. But you got all this stuff around mm-hmm. you and you're ready to speak. Like you literally yeah. have words to speak. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I didn't say a thing. And I was like, girl, you gotta, you gotta do something about that. Like you gotta mm-hmm. break the word curses or you gotta do something. And so reading mm-hmm. that about belief systems, I was like, oh, mm, this is gonna take a little bit more time. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Wow, thanks for sharing that story. I mean, you know, one of my major stories around that, we won't get into that here. We'll let them have to read the book to get into that um, around just how words affected me. And and I know you already read it in the book, but for those who, who are watching, um, you know, one of the exercises that I share that I use around how to kind of, you know, take that, weed it out, 
create, take the old message, create a new message, that whole thing. Like, it really works for me. Like, it really, really works. It's, it's a discipline. So just like exercising, like we know we should work exercise, but the moment comes and we don't always get to the gym. It's the same thing with our, our exercising new disciplines for our thought life, right? Like, so it's like you read it, you know it, you heard it. The moment comes, you didn't do it. That's okay. We're going to try to get to the gym the next time, you know? So um, I really hope that, that that as you, you know, journey through the book and through the concepts, that that's something that really, that, that really gets into your discipline because it's really been a game changer for me. It, it really has. I want to know um, what has been some of the greatest challenges you faced while reading this and how did you overcome them? Uh, while writing? Mm -hmm. um, so two things come, so three things. So three things real quick come to mind. First is um, I had to unbox um, my own belief systems around my ability to be a good writer like I didn't see myself as an author so I'm like I speak that's a gift that I'm familiar with that I'm comfortable with but writing was new and I don't love writing like I wasn't like oh I can't wait to like the process was brutal it was absolutely brutal and so you know that was something that God had to deal with me on and he gave me some specific you know instructions he was just like the same anointing it's on your words, it's on your pen. And he gave me some declarations and I wrote them down, Laverta. And every time I sat to write, I had to read them. Every, you're talking about a year half long process. So that was the first one. Um, the second one was, I believe it's chapter two or three, where I talk about unboxing your relationships. And as I talk, as I describe in the book, it was the most difficult to write because in the middle of it, like I was just, I'm like, I don't know what to say. Why? I literally felt like resistance. Like I felt actual resistance when I was writing. And then God had to deal with me on some relationships and some people in places that, that I, I was supposed to move on from. And he's just like, we can't, you're not writing this chapter till you finish, you finish your, your, your cleanup list of people in places. And girl, like, like I described in the book, like I shot up real time, went to whom I needed to, to go to, shot off emails, did the things. And the moment I did that, the release for the chapter mm -hmm. came. And um, the third and last thing was, was my health. Um, a lot of people don't know that I went through a, a major health crisis um, right around the time I started uh, to write the book. Um, and I... I received a diagnosis that really impacted like just so many areas of my health, a big, a big, a big one being mobility um, to the point where there were days where I couldn't move from the neck down. Couldn't use my, my arms, lift my arms to type. I was trying to do voice to voice to text. And it felt like, whew, every time I talk about it, I get a little, you know, um, it felt like every time I touched the page to write like it, it felt like a backlash like a physical backlash like it's like I got sicker and sicker and that's when I was like oh we're writing this book we're writing this book I I see you and me and we are writing this book and so um it was a huge challenge um I took a big pause in the middle of it, shout out to my literary agent, Javon Bolden, who I call Pastor Javon, because she was like, when I told her, she was like, come on, we got to write this book. What's going on with your manuscript? And I told her what was going on with my health. She was like, I'm going to fast. She's like, I know you can't fast because you've got all this medication and things you got to do and whatever. But she's like, oh, no, I'm, I'm going to fast about this. And so um, it was no joke. Like, writing this book was no joke. I am thankful for Javon as well and her fasting. Um, one of the things that I've realized while being in publishing is like, once the person has signed the deal, it's almost like the enemy is like, bet, we got you now. 
And right. it's like everywhere through the process, you can see all these kind of things where I'm just like, no, like once you sign that deal, I am your intercessor. Like, I don't care what's mm. happening. Like, I am interceding for you from the time you sign that to the time it ends because there mm. are craziness that happens as soon as you mm -hmm. sign that. That was like, all right, that's cute. You got a little deal. That's wonderful. It's great. You didn't sign on the dotted line. I'm coming for you. And yeah. I feel like that's what happens with a lot of authors. Yeah. Enemies like, oh, you think you think this is just going to be a breeze? You're just going to put words on the paper and everybody's just going to yeah. buy them? No, let's. Let's challenge the yeah. very words that you are writing about and the very thing that you believe yeah. in. And I'm like, yeah, because the reach is different, right? Like when you speak, it stops with who's in the room, right? Unless like nowadays social media, sh someone shares a clip, it may go viral. But for the most part, it goes as far as the people in the room. But there's something different about a book. There's something different about reading than listening. That there's something different about sitting with the information and how it lands with people. And again, like the reach. So yeah, he's like, mm -mm. <laughs> we can't have this. But it, like I said, it was just like, okay, I see you. It's on that on site. Okay, let's go. I want to know what did you learn about yourself through this process, and what did you learn about God? <sighs> what did I learn about myself? I learned that. I mean, intellectually, I know, and I say it in the book that, you know, this isn't a one-time deal, you know, it's, it's something, it's a lifestyle and all that good stuff, but I learned that I'm not as, I'm not as finished and polished as I think I am sometimes. Like, it was, I, I thought I was writing the book from the place of, I've already done this like years of grand unboxing and yeah there might be some things but like no like the moment the book was done it was almost like like I would go back <laughs> in, in the editing and I'd read certain sections and it was like I wrote that because I'm going through that it, it, I literally it felt like I was reading someone else's words and it was like ministered to me and helping me navigate where I was post post writing it. And so it's almost like God hit reset on the unboxing process as soon as I had finished writing. And I realized there was just there was still so much more in there that needed an earthing um, than I than I thought and realized, I, I think. Um, what did I learn about God? I learned that the relationship is, I think, like, I come from a charismatic background, and so much of how we do faith is feeling driven, you know, like, I sense him, I feel him, like, ooh, like, Shanda, Shanda, Pentecostal, right? Um, but any mature believer knows, like, if you've been journeying with Jesus Christ for, for a good little while, like, you get to this season where you feel and sense nothing and you have to just go by faith that you are saved, that you're, that you're still saved, that Holy Spirit still resides in you and is empowering you. And God is near, even though I don't feel anything. And post writing, like once the book was done, done, like that's the kind of season I've entered in and honestly it's the kind of season I'm still in right now and so today's launch day I didn't wake up speaking in tongues and feeling goosebumps about it but I'm still praising and thanking and journeying through this experience knowing that he's like no less closer than when I do feel him and that's that's growth that's growth that's growth that's maturity um, and I don't know why he does that. And I don't know why he feels that I need to know that because I want to feel him there. I want to sense him. Um, but, but I know that I can still draw from him even when the feelings aren't there. Um, I have a few more questions for you. One mm -hmm. is what was your easiest chapter to write and what was your most challenging? So the most challenging was that relationship one that I talked about. 
um, Michelle assured the why. Um, the easiest, um, huh? Let me let me look at this. I, I feel like chapter one. Chapter one felt chapter one. Chapter one is the need to unbox, unboxing the fall that started it all. Um, I love Bible study. It felt a little Bible study-ish. I don't know, who knows? Maybe I'll turn that chapter into some type of Bible study. But um, yeah, I would say chapter one because it's a passage that I've been chewing on well before it was time to write the book. So when it was time to write the book, the concept was kind of like biblically, it was already in here. The foundation was here. So it was just really fun to get to share that in a way that was um, palatable for, for others. Can you share any wisdom you have for those who um, are interested in writing a book as well? Like what kind of advice or wisdom or insight would you give those? Yeah, I think two of the things that really, really, well, three, three things real quick. First one, get an outline. Like I find a lot of authors that I know hate having to exercise the discipline of an outline because a lot of writers tend to be creatives and we feel held hamper down. But like, as one of my writing coaches said, the oil is in the book, is in the outline. It really, really is like, without it, you just don't know when you're done. You don't know where you're going. Like, it's just, it's a game changer. Um, the second thing that I found really powerful was writing within a community of other Christian writers. So I joined a boot camp. Um, I forget the name of it, but it's run by uh, Chanel Martin. And yeah, like we for, I think it was 21 days, we had to block out about three or four days a week over the 21 days where we jumped online. There were intercessors there. There were writing coaches there. And there was a little bit of, each day looked a little bit different, but having someone share word over you, pray over you. And then even though we weren't talking, but looking on the screen and seeing like, you know, some 30, 40, some other writers and hearing what God is like, sharing that journey was very significant into catapulting um, the writing of the book. Um, and then lastly, a prayer team. Um, man, like I have a, I have a circle, uh, an inner circle of girlfriends. We have a chat group. And when I say they pray, they intercede, they pray, they intercede. When my health was declining, they prayed. When it was good, they prayed. Um, I could go to them and say, this is what's happening today, or this, this, we're at this point in the publishing process, I need you to pray. Um, the prayer of the, the righteous availeth much. <laughs> and, like, it's very spiritual, it's very spiritual, it's, it's ministry. And just like you wouldn't approach ministry without a covering, the, um, the, the ministry of writing is, is, is no different. Thank you for that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, as we wrap up, I want the people to know where they can find out more about you if they're in the Atlanta area. Where can they meet you tonight? Um, if they're in Toronto, next uh, book launch in your home. Um, and where can they find you on social media? Obviously, they can find the books. Wherever books are sold, they can go to Amazon and, and do all the things. Just let us know where they can find you. Absolutely. So you can find me anywhere on all major platforms. Nicole O Seven. That's how you spell it there. Don't forget the O. Um, I Facebook is where I move, breathe, and find my my being. So you can always catch me there and slide into the DMs. You can also find me on my website, NicoleOSalmon.com. I always encourage people to sign up for the mail list. It's not spammy. It's not junky. It's like good stuff. Plus, if I am popping up somewhere or doing something special online, my mailing, my mail list community is always the first to know. Um, tonight, I well, right now I'm actually in Atlanta. You should see the janky setup for this this interview. I'm like right here is like my hotel door. I'm looking into the shower in the bathroom. <laughs> so I am in the Atlanta area. 
And I'm going to be at the Cumberland Barnes and Noble tonight where you can purchase the book from me in person and sign and meet and all that good stuff. Um, so that's happening tonight, six to eight at the Cumberland uh, Barnes and Noble. And then I head back home and next weekend on the 20th, home is Toronto. So if you're in the greater Toronto area or listen, I have people driving across the border like who are in Rochester, Niagara, uh, Detroit. Um, who are driving in for the uh, the homecoming launch party on the 20th. And so either of those, you can just find the details and link in my bio on Instagram. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you so much for this book. I'm so grateful that I know you and that your book has come out and that we can celebrate uh, all the wonderful things God has done in and through you as you birth this book. Thank you. I appreciate the invite and getting to sit with the audience. No problem. Any last words before we say goodbye? Oh, say that again. Any last words before we say goodbye? It's so odd. All of a sudden, I can't hear you. Oh, that is odd. Um, let, let me, me try uh, popping off my headset and see if that makes a difference. Okay, let's try that again. Can you hear me? Yes, I was saying any last words before we say goodbye. Um, yeah, like just thank you for your support as a as a as a black female Christian author. Um, you may not be a, a writer, you may not even be a big reader, but even just purchasing a book by there's such underrepresentation of uh, black peoples, black women in traditionally published uh, spaces. And so by simply picking up the book, you are saying our voices matter, representation matters, you're saying we want to hear more from black authors. Um, and so even if it's just on that level, um, I, I really, I really implore you to get a book, not just my book. Like when I see people, I'll just order it. Sometimes they're just on my shelves because um, ordering says the gospel, the gospel in print and the gospel in print, um, according to black authors, uh, it, it, it matters. Right. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this author interview. I hope you have a wonderful launch event. Thank you. Nice, wonderful launch event and safe travel as you go home. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. You too. Bye. Bye.